Today, I will show you a drama. Mystery, thriller film from 2019, titled Swallow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Hunter, a young woman from a working-class family, gets to move to a very fancy upstate. New York house, when she marries Richie, a man from a rich family, who will one day, become the CEO of his father's company. This means she gets to stay at home and be a housewife. So she spends her days decorating the rooms, working in the garden, watching TV, playing games on her phone, and making dinner for her husband. While initially she feels lucky to have him and the house his parents bought for them, Hunter soon realizes their married life isn't as great as she expected being alone in a house away from the city, she feels rather isolated. And Richie acts very distant towards her, not really caring about her hard work put into food and decorating, and ignoring her while she talks to him in favor of his phone. One day, Hunter finds out she's pregnant, and while the news excites Richie, she doesn't take it well. It can't be a good idea to bring a baby into this marriage when she is constantly feeling emotionally stifled, like when the couple goes to have dinner with Richie's parents, Catherine and Michael, and her storytelling is interrupted and ignored in order to discuss business. Even if it was Richie the one that asked her to share in the first place. It is during this dinner that Hunter first gets the urge to put something in her mouth, so she takes some ice from her glass and chews on it, causing Richie and his parents to bafflingly stare at her. Some days later, while she's getting the baby's room ready, Hunter is startled by Catherine, who let herself in without even calling first. She came to gift Hunter a self-help book that helped her when she gave birth to Richie. When Hunter invites her to have lunch together, however, she turns her down and leaves after telling her she should grow her hair because Richie prefers girls with long hair. Hunter begins reading the book and finds a piece of advice that says you should do something unexpected every day. This leaves her thinking for a while, and after some hesitation, she picks up a marble and swallows it. Such action makes her feel better about herself. Later at night, while in bed with Richie, her gleeful mood calls his attention. When he asks her what has made her so happy, she says she's proud of herself for having done something unexpected, but she can't bring herself to confess the truth so instead she says she's chosen a different color for the drapes and asks for his approval. Richie tells her she could never do anything wrong, yet the next morning, when he finds out she's ironed a silk tie and ruined it, he scolds her pretty badly for it. After he leaves for work, Hunter goes to relieve herself and finds that she has expelled the marble so she puts on some gloves and retrieves it from the toilet. After washing it, she proudly takes it to her room and displays it on her boudoir. A couple of days later, while she's watching a documentary about motherhood and giving birth, Catherine calls her and invites her to come over to her place. They chat about the jobs they had before they were married, and Catherine wonders if Hunter is truly happy or she's faking it. Hunter replies, she is very happy, but it's clear that she's lying. Sometime later, Hunter is vacuuming the carpet when she finds something stuck in the vacuum cleaner, a thumbtack. She takes it to the kitchen counter and stares at it for a while before putting it in her mouth, only to spit it seconds later when it hurts her tongue. After checking the injury on the mirror, she returns to the living room, where she stares at the thumbtack again when she feels it calling for her. Not being able to resist it any longer, she grabs it again and puts it in her mouth once more, and this time, she manages to swallow it. She can't help groaning in pain as the thumbtack makes its way down her throat, but at the end of it, she's still proud of herself. Later that Night, Hunter goes to bed after checking her growing belly, but she's suddenly surprised by her husband arriving with a bunch of co-workers to have an improvised celebration. While changing into nicer clothes, she starts feeling pain in her abdomen and rushes to the bathroom, where she expels the thumbtack and some blood in the toilet. Not wanting to be discovered, 
She hurries to clean it all up, and when Richie comes to check on her, she lies and says she's fine. Richie believes her even when he sees her trembling. Hunter goes downstairs, ready to join the men outside, but steps back when she discovers a blood stain on her clothes. While she washes the stain away in the kitchen sink, she's approached by one of Richie's co-workers, who asks her for a hug because he's lonely. Hunter hesitates at first, finding the idea quite weird coming from a stranger, but she eventually gives in and ends up enjoying the hug, since she's missing that kind of comfort in her life as well. From then on, while working on decorating the house, Hunter keeps on swallowing all kinds of things, like pages from the book, a battery, a lock, and even a little figurine. Every time she expels the objects she swallows, she washes them and displays them on her boudoir like little trophies of her accomplishments. When the time comes to get her first sonogram, the technician notices an anomaly in her abdomen, and Hunter is taken to have emergency surgery to get all the items she swallowed removed. The doctors diagnose her with pica, a disorder that causes people to eat inedible objects. When they go back home, Richie yells at her for having hidden this from him while throwing away all her little trophies in the trash, not understanding she didn't know about this before they got married, and that she cannot help it. Richie and Michael take Hunter to see a psychiatrist and expect to be there during the therapy session, but the doctor tells them to leave. While Hunter wishes she could simply have the medication, the doctor points out it won't work if they don't discuss the cause for her disorder as well. Hunter is reluctant to talk about her family, claiming she had a normal childhood and her parents loved her very much. She also explains that she swallows things because she likes feeling the texture in her mouth, especially metals, and the pain caused by sharp things apparently doesn't bother her. Catherine visits Hunter later and teaches her some healthy recipes, claiming that her issue is simply a disconnect between her brain and what her stomach wants. She and Michael also bring help in the form of Louis, an immigrant from Syria that will keep an eye on her while Richie is at work. Hunter now feels even more stifled and smothered, because Louis keeps trying to do her everyday chores as if she was invalid, and he dismisses her mental illness as resulting from having a quiet life. Whenever she needs to go to the bathroom, Louis checks her clothes to be sure she isn't hiding any object she could swallow while he isn't looking, but he doesn't know that Hunter has already hidden a little bag under the toilet, containing various screws and other little metal knickknacks that she keeps on eating. When she returns to therapy, the doctor expresses concern over her having swallowed a battery and a needle, which could have killed her. Hunter says eating those things made her feel under control. Before leaving, she brings up her mother and is about to confess something about her childhood. When she suddenly changes her mind and says goodbye to the doctor without adding more. Later that day, they celebrate Richie's birthday at home with all their friends. When one of his co-workers accidentally mentions stomach pumping, she apologizes to Hunter for the comment making her realize Richie has told everyone about her disorder. She confronts him about it outside, saying she doesn't want people to know, but he dismisses her feelings, saying he doesn't want her to ruin his birthday party. After the party is over, while the couple is making love, Hunter gets particularly aggressive in her movements and finishes before Richie can. When he points this out, Hunter makes him apologize for telling his friends about her condition and promise that he still loves her unconditionally. During the next therapy session, the doctor makes Hunter finally reveal the family issue she's been hiding. It turns out, her dad isn't her actual biological father, her mother got pregnant after a stranger she met at. A bar followed her home and took advantage of her. Hunter knows the name of the man, William Irwin and carries a picture of him she cut from the newspaper when they announced he would serve time. Her mother never considered terminating the pregnancy because she's religious and right-wing. But Hunter promises she's dealt with this whole side of her life. She swears that her mother isn't resentful, 
that her stepfather was very nice to her and that her sisters loved her. The doctor thinks this has a lot to do with her disorder and accepts to hug her before she leaves at the end of the session. Richie starts being nicer and more affectionate towards Hunter. And this helps her stop the swallowing urge when she's tempted by the dirt in the garden. However, her happiness doesn't last long when she enters the house, she overhears Richie and her doctor talking and learns her husband has bribed the psychiatrist to tell him everything she said during their sessions. After he leaves, she goes through a panic attack and has trouble breathing, so she hides under the bed for safety. That's where Louis finds her moments later. And since she won't come out, he decides to offer his company by joining her there and patting her shoulder. Hunter falls asleep and wakes up in the evening, finding Louis has also fallen asleep under the bed next to her. She takes advantage of this to go to the kitchen and search for something small enough to swallow, which ends up being a miniature screwdriver. When Louis wakes up, he finds Hunter choking on the kitchen floor and immediately calls 911 to take her to the hospital. After undergoing surgery again to remove the screwdriver, Richie and his parents make arrangements to send Hunter to a psychiatric hospital until the baby is born. Hunter doesn't want to go, but she gives in when Michael threatens that Richie will divorce her. After signing the papers, Catherine makes her leave her engagement ring to take good care of it. And she also asks her to leave the phone, but Hunter refuses because she has her games in it. When they are about to leave, she goes back to her room to retrieve her charger and Louis finally takes pity on her, so together they make up a little plan. Hunter escapes the house through the window while Louis goes to the bathroom to open the sink tap and close the door to make it look like she tricked him under the excuse of needing to use the toilet. By the time the family realizes what has happened and begins to search for her, it is too late, Hunter has crossed the woods and made it to the road where she hitchhikes to a motel. After taking some dirt from the plants outside and hiding it in her pockets, she rents a room and calls Richie to tell her that while she did have feelings for him, she rushed into their marriage and the baby only to make him happy. Richie tries to promise things will change for the better using a very sweet tone, but when Hunter still refuses to go back, he gets pretty aggressive and tells her he'll hunt her down while insulting her, so she just hangs up on him. After destroying her cell phone so it can't be tracked, Hunter watches TV while eating dirt, then goes to sleep. The following morning, she calls her mother to ask permission to visit, clarifying it's an emergency, and her mom says she would love to see her, but the house is currently crowded because of her sister and the new baby. Distressed, Hunter hangs up on her too and hitchhikes to the suburbs where her biological father Erwin lives. Irwin's family is celebrating his birthday, so Hunter sneaks in, pretending to be just another guest. After going to the bathroom to throw up all the dirt she ate last night, she finally approaches Irwin and his wife, Lucy, who thinks she's the mother of one of her daughter's friends. Using the excuse of helping them clean, Hunter follows them to the kitchen for more privacy and mentions her mother's name, which greatly shocks Irwin when he hears it. He quickly recovers though, and makes up a story about Hunter's mom being an old school friend of his that he saw recently and invited her to the party. Hunter plays along and adds that she came because her mother couldn't. After Lucy leaves to put their daughter to bed, Erwin asks Hunter if she came to ruin his life. But she only wants an explanation, so he gives her one. Erwin explains he did it because it made him feel powerful and special, almost like a god, but when he went to jail, they beat him so bad he needed to wear a colostomy bag. That made him realize he was no god, just an awful person. Hunter wonders if he's ashamed of her and if this makes her the same as him. But he assures her that's not the case and it isn't her fault, giving her the closure she needed. Afterward, Hunter visits a clinic to get pills to end the pregnancy. She takes them while having lunch in a mall's food court, so when her body finally reacts and it's time to experience the termination, she does it in a public restroom. 
when she comes out. She smiles at her reflection in the mirror, finally feeling free.